So the first part of, uh, of carbohydrates that we have to talk about are the differences between aldoses and ketoses, and then translating these into Haworth projections and chair confirmations. So let's start by defining the key differences between aldoses and ketoses. Namely, an aldose has an aldehyde in it, and a ketose has a ketone in it. So let's look at the aldose first, because typically you're going to be working with aldoses more than ketones, or ketoses rather. An aldose, you will typically see at the very top, CHO. CHO. And what CHO is this, an aldehyde. Okay? So this right here is the same thing as CHO. And then you have several carbons with one hydrogen and one OH on them. And at the very bottom, you'll see CH2OH. In the case of the ketose, the ketose has a carbonyl on it. Or a, so rather not a carbonyl, a ketone on it. And that ketone will always be one from the top, or one from the end, or one down from the, uh, the one end of the chain. So if this is carbon one, here's carbon two, that's where your, your uh, ketone would be. And then you have some number of OH hydrogen carbons, and then a CH2OH on the bottom as well. So the key difference is an aldehyde versus a ketone. Now, um, how about translating these into the Haworth projection? So we're going to make a couple rules, and then we'll start with the aldose, and then we'll draw the ketose. So first of all, how do we even form the ring, which is what makes up the Haworth and the chair projections? So we have a couple terms we need to talk about. First of all, the first carbon in the chain, so I'm going to number this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Six carbons all together, so this is called a hexose, or an aldohexose, a six-carbon aldose. Okay? What happens to form the ring is carbon 1 in an aldose is what we refer to as the anomeric carbon. The anomeric carbon is the carbon with the double bond O on it, and it will be attacked by something. What forms the ring, what attacks that double bond O carbon, is the oxygen of the OH group on the second to last carbon. So if this was a shorter chain and say the CH2OH group was here, then it would be the OH of carbon four. But since we're a six carbon chain, it's carbon five in this case. We refer to this OH as the penultimate OH on the penultimate carbon. And so this OH will use its electrons to attack that carbon right there, and the double bond O will swing up. And so you're gonna be forming a ring. Now in your notes, you'll usually see something drawn out like Basically this, where you have an OH here, and now they draw this really weird looking thing where they go around and like that. And that's a really lazy way of drawing the ring, but it makes the point of showing you where is that ring forming from. So now let's actually draw this a little neater. So, oh, I just redrew that exactly the same. So we're starting with this, carbonyl, and we're going to form a ring by having carbon five, uh, the OH on carbon five attack carbon one. So I'm going to renumber this slightly differently. I have carbon, I have one, two, three, four, five. And now the oxygen is the sixth member of the ring. So I'm making a six member ring, but this carbon over here is not part of it. It's going to be sticking off of the ring. So what you're going to do to figure out what this ring should look like is just start by drawing a six member ring. And typically, your six member ring, they draw it on the side like this. Now we said one of the oxygens is what attacks to form this ring. So I'm going to usually it's the upper right cor carbon or the up, upper right corner. It doesn't have to be, but as long as you number your numbers are consistent, it doesn't really matter. You just pay attention to where things end up. So let's say that this was six. So that's six, which means I'm going to go around this way. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Now let's start. Carbon one we said was the anomeric carbon. Now the anomeric carbon, because it starts out as a double bond O, it doesn't have any stereochemistry, right? Remember, double bonds are flat. But when this ring is formed, this is getting pushed up and becomes an OH, which, form, which gives it now stereochemistry, either wedge or dash. And now if you're going from a Fisher projection to a Haworth and that's all you're doing, you don't have enough context to know whether it is wedged or dashed. So sometimes you're going to see basically a squiggly line coming off of carbon one. And what that means is it could be up or down. 
And usually the context of the question will give you a little more detail, and we'll see that in a later video that goes over naming about alpha and beta sugars. In the meantime, though, the remaining OHs do have a rule for stereochemistry. And this is a rule that you can just put on your card. The rule is, if in the Fischer projection, if your OH is on the left, then in your Haworth projection, that OH will be pointing up. And in your Fischer projection, if the OH is on the right, that OH will point down. So now let's translate that into this. So we said that we see that carbon 2 has an OH that's on the right, which means it's going to point down. The OH on 3 is pointing down as well, as is the OH on 4. Now I'm going to stop at carbon 5 because, well, does carbon 5 have an OH on it in the Haworth? Remember, this OH was the sixth member of the ring right there, which means carbon 5 doesn't actually have an OH on it. It does, however, have the CH2 OH group coming off of it. And this, this CH2 OH will be coming off of carbon 5 over here, but it follows its own rule about the stereochemistry. So for the penultimate carbon, if the penultimate, uh, so for the penultimate OH, If the penultimate OH is on the left, then when you draw your Haworth, the CH2OH group will be pointing down. And if the penultimate OH is on the right, is on the right, it will point the CH2. OH group will point up. So the penultimate OH follows the opposite rule of the other OHs. So in this case, the CH2OH that I'm drawing will be pointing up like that. Okay? And whether this is facing left or right, that doesn't really matter, as long as the bond coming off of the ring is pointing up. And of course, the hydrogens are on the opposite directions of the OHs, but I'm not bothering to draw them in. Okay, and that's how you draw a Haworth from a Fischer projection of an aldose. Now let's go back and look at the ketose that I was drawing and think about how that is different. So for a ketose, we said CH2OH, and we had a carbonyl there, we had OH there, OH there, one, two, three, four, five, CH2OH, so six carbons again, hydrogen is drawn in, okay? So once again, what forms the ring is the penultimate OH attacking the carbonyl. So if I'm going to number my carbons in the way I did before for figuring out how large is that ring, I have one, two, three, four, and five, the oxygen that attacks. So I'm making a five-membered ring with this ketose. So I have an oxygen. I have a five-membered ring, and now I'm just going to number accordingly and fill in the blank. So I have the oxygen I said was number five, and then I'll just number one, two, three, that's the three, I promise, three, and four. And so let's see what's on each of those carbons. So carbon one was my anomeric carbon, because it's the carbon with the double bond O. In the ketose, it's not carbon one, it's carbon two. Well, if I number the chain down from the start. So if I'm just numbering carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm numbering these carbons, but I'm drawing them to the left. Anyway, so this carbon, just like the other one, we don't really have any specification on whether it is up or down because we started with something that's flat, which means it can go up or it can go down, and we don't have enough context to know. So for now, I'm just going to draw another squiggly line, which means it could be one or the other. 
However, on that very same carbon-1, there is also a CH2OH group, which means whichever direction the OH isn't pointing, the CH2OH is. So both of these would be squiggly lines, and there's more context behind which is which. But for now, I'm just going to draw them one way. Let's say the OH is up, and the CH2OH is pointing down. So first of all, the key difference in a Haworth that you can see for, um, for rings is the anomeric carbon here has a CH2OH on it, whereas in the aldehyde, it was just an OH, and then a hydrogen rather than CH2OH. Now, all the remaining carbons follow the rules we set up here for the aldos, meaning carbon two had an OH to the right, which means that OH is pointing down. Carbon three had an OH to the right, so that OH is also pointing down. Now carbon four, or carbon five if we're counting by the pink numbering, that carbon was our penultimate carbon, which means that follows this other rule. If the OH is on the right, the penultimate OH is on the right, the CH2OH group will point up, opposite the rule that we gave for the other one, the other OHs. So this would be the Haworth projection for this ketose. Another confirmation question they can ask you is about comparing Fisher to chair confirmations. Now the rules we set up for Fisher to Haworth projections still work for translating Fisher to chair confirmations in terms of up and down versus left and right. Now the key difference is, well, a chair confirmation isn't the same thing as a Haworth. It's not those nicely drawn rings. It's that pinched in bow tie looking thing. Now how do you approach this? First of all, every if they ever ask you a question about drawing the chair confirmation, it will always be a question about an aldohexose, an aldose that has a six carbon chain. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's the only thing that could make a six member chair conformation, and we never really talked about any other kinds or sizes of chair conformations. So that's all we could ever ask. Um, now, start by just drawing the base structure of a chair conformation, which is this weird bow tie looking thing. And remember that one of the members of this ring is an oxygen. The oxygen that makes that ring is always going to be the OH that is the second from the bottom, so your penultimate OH. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to number from the carbon that was attacked to the carbon that to the OH that did the attack. So one, two, three, four, five, and then the OH was six. So now I'm just going to translate those numbers here. The OH was six, and then I'm just going to number one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and now I'm just gonna use those rules that I set up for myself earlier. So let's see. The carbon coming off of, car or the OH coming off of carbon one is your anomeric carbon. And you can always tell it's your anomeric carbon because that carbon is the one that is attached to two different oxygens. The oxygen of the ring and then an OH. And again, I don't know whether this OH is up or down because there is no context in the question. We'll again, we'll talk about alpha versus beta, and that's how you'll know in the future in a later video. Now, two through four have one rule, and then five being the penultimate OH, we know has its own rule. So let's start with two, three, and four. Two has an OH on the right. We go to this rule. If the OH is on the right in the Fisher projection, the OH in the chair or the Haworth will point down. So I'm going to draw it pointing down like that. For three, the OH was on the left. In the case of, uh, so in the case if it's on the left in the fissure, it points up in the chair of the Haworth. So I'm going to draw the OH pointing up like that. Carbon four had an OH to the right. So it's going to point down. Okay. Finally, carbon five, the car our penultimate carbon. Remember, that follows its own set of rules that are opposite the rules we were using for the other ones. So if this OH is on the right, the CH2OH group will be pointing up off of carbon five. So it would look something like that. Okay? And that's really all there is. I don't know if you'll I don't know if they expect you to know how to convert to chair. Usually, again, it's about converting Haworth to Fisher and vice versa, but just in case, here's an example. Just follow the same rules you were using for the Haworth projections. Now that we've gone over turning Fisher into Haworth and Ring, let's try and go the other way. Let's turn a, a Fisher, or sorry, a Haworth and a chair confirmation into Fisher projections. 
So if you want to practice on your own before I go through these, pause the video. Otherwise, let's start with the string up here. The first thing to point out is, is this a ketose or an aldose? Now notice, this carbon right here we know is the anomeric. Why? Because this carbon is connected to two separate oxygens, the oxygen of the ring and the OH group. So we know that is the anomeric, so we can number this carbon one. And then we have two, three, four, five being the oxygen that forms the ring. Now altogether I have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. So I'm gonna draw a six carbon chain in the Fischer projection. So six carbons. Now remember, we know this is a ketose because on your anomeric carbon, you see a CH2OH, which means at the very top, I know I will have a CH2OH, and the second one down will be a double bond O. This will always be consistent for any ketose you have to draw in a Fischer projection. So I'm gonna number the carbons in pink and the ring forming malt atoms in green. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm gonna do the one, two, three, four, five, and then six. Okay, so carbon three has a hydrogen and an OH, so I'm just gonna draw a line across. I'll figure out which side the OH is on in a second. Another line across, another line across. And then six is always gonna be the bottom carbon, whether it's an aldose or a ketose, will always be a CH2OH. So now I just have to figure out which side on three, four, and five is my OH. And I'm following the pink numbers now, so I'm gonna erase those, that one, those green numbers. So we don't get confused. Okay, so let's start with carbon three. Carbon three has the OH pointing down. If the OH is pointing down, the OH is on the right in the Fischer projection. Carbon four has the OH pointing up, which means that OH would be on the left of the Fischer projection. Carbon five, now remember, carbon five is the second from the bottom position which means that, my, that is my penultimate, that follows the other set of rules. So I see that that carbon, that CH2OH, is pointing down. So if my CH2OH is pointing down from my penultimate OH, that OH is on the left in my Fischer projection. So that OH is like that. And so this would be the structure of the first ring. Now let's draw the Fischer projection of the second ring. <coughs> so, this is a chair confirmation, but still we just use the same rules. So we see it's a six member chair confirmation. And we said before, the only way you can make a six member chair confirmation is a six membered aldohexose, which again means I can just start by drawing a six carbon chain. We know for any aldose that we're dealing with, and also why do I know this is an aldose? Because on my anomeric carbon, the carbon that is connected to the two oxygen groups there is only an OH, not a CH2OH and an OH. So this is an aldose for sure. I know that at the top of any aldose is a CHO group, and at the bottom of any aldose is a CH2OH group. Now again, I'm gonna start by numbering my carbon chain. So if I start here as one, two, three, four, five, and then carbon six is over there. So I need six all together, one, two, three, four, and five, and then six. And we'll number this down the way. Your anomeric carbon, if you draw it this way, will always be carbon one for any aldose you draw. Four, five, six. Okay, so carbon one's OH becomes the oxygen of the CHO, which means there's no left or right to begin with. Carbon two has an OH that is pointing down. If the OH in the chair or the Haworth is pointing down, that means the OH is on the right. So OH is on the right here, and hydrogen is on the other side. Carbon three has another OH pointing down, so again, that OH is on the right, and the hydrogen is on the left. The OH on four is pointing up, which means it is on the left, and the hydrogen is on the right. And finally, carbon five is, again, our penultimate carbon. So we look at the CH2OH, and in this example, it is pointing down. When CH2OH points down, the penultimate points to the left. So the OH would be on the left like that. And so this would be the Fischer projection of your uh, of this ring. Okay.